Hello, my name's Tom, and one of the highlights of my year is to present the Halle for Youth concerts at the Bridgewater Hall and at the City Hall in Sheffield, when thousands of young people from across Greater Manchester and beyond come together to experience the Halle performing live. Now, for all the obvious reasons, we can't be together in that way at the moment. And though we can never recreate the energy and the excitement of hearing an orchestra perform live, we have created this concert especially for you, so you can have the Halle in your classroom. We're going to hear music by the French composer Maurice Ravel and his suite, Mother Goose. Now, a suite is just a collection of something. You might have a three-piece suite in your living room, two armchairs and a sofa. This is a suite of musical stories, of fairy tales that Ravel originally wrote for his godchildren, the children of the Gadebski family. Ravel himself didn't have any children, but he was fascinated by them, by their curiosity, their inventiveness, by their creativity. And he wrote this piece of music to be played by the Gadebskis at the piano. Now, the Gadebskis were absolutely thrilled to be given this piece of music, but it was very difficult. So Ravel coloured it in. He took the black and white sketch for the piano and he added all of the colours of the orchestra to bring these fairy stories to life. Now each of the five movements is going to be introduced by a musician from the Halle. But before that, here's our friend Kieran from PZ Cousins. PZ Cousins, perhaps better known for our brands such as Carex and Imperial Leather, are proud of our association with the Halle Orchestra of Manchester in the North West. And as a major sponsor, I'm delighted to welcome you to this concert designed and created especially for you. Hello, my name's Amy and I play the flute in the Halle Orchestra. The flute is a member of the woodwind family and we usually have two flutes in the Halle Orchestra, sometimes three, but in the piece that you're going to hear today, Mother Goose, we've got two flutes. The flute, like all of the woodwind instruments, uses air to make a sound. So on the flute, we blow right across the top of the instrument and we make a sound like this. It's very similar if you've ever tried to make a whistling sound by blowing across the top of a bottle. Um, it works in just the same way. Um, this flute is made of silver, but they can be made out of lots of different types of metals or sometimes even wood. The um, flute is one of the highest pitched instruments in the orchestra um, and the highest in the woodwind family, except for the piccolo, which you're going to meet later on. It starts off the lowest part of its range um, in about the same range as we can sing comfortably. We could probably all sing that note, but it goes really, really high up, much higher than we'd be able to use the human voice. The first piece we're going to hear is inspired by the story of Sleeping Beauty. As you will know in the story, a wicked and jealous old woman wants a beautiful princess dead. As the old woman is working at her spinning wheel, the princess pricks her finger on the needle. But rather than dying, as the wicked woman intends, the fairy godmother of the princess casts a spell and the princess falls into a deep sleep. As soon as the music starts, we will hear this melody played on the flute. Imagine the princess asleep as we listen to the Halle perform this Pavan for the Sleeping Beauty.
Hi, my name is Stefan and I play the oboe with the Halle. The oboe is made out of wood and it's part of the woodwind family in the orchestra. That is flutes, clarinet, bassoons and oboes. What makes the oboe different from the other instruments is this thing here at the top of the instrument. See, I can take it out. <laughs> and this thing is called a reed. And without a reed, the oboe becomes pretty much useless. See what happens if I blow in it. Nothing. But what happens if I blow in this reed? You get a noise. A reed is two pieces of wood which is caned on top of each other which vibrates and create that vibration. And once I put the reed in the oboe, you get this noise. But most of the time, composers use the instrument to create long, beautiful melodies, like the one in Swan Lake by Tchaikovsky. So this is it, this is the oboe. Hello, my name's Tom, and I also play the oboe in the Halle, but my main instrument is the cor anglais. Now, the cor anglais is a member of the oboe family, just like the instrument Stefan plays, but it's slightly larger. It has the same fingering, so if I was to play a note on the cor anglais, a written note, the fingering would be the same on the oboe. But the difference is this. If Stefan plays an A on the oboe, and I play an A on the cor anglais, So it sounds a fifth lower, but as you could probably hear, it's not just a larger oboe sound, it's a different tone altogether. There's only one cor anglais in the orchestra, and so most of the music that's written for it is for solos. And the solos it plays are usually long, slow, soulful, reflective, not so fast and flashy. And the most famous solo of all, which you've probably all heard, is the slow movement of the New World Symphony by Dvorak. The second story from Ravel's Mother Goose is about the fairy tale character Tom Thumb. Now, Tom Thumb finds himself outside a big forest, deep and dark and mysterious. But, like all children, he wants to know what's in there. But he's a bit scared of getting lost, so he comes up with the ingenious idea of sprinkling breadcrumbs along the path as he walks, so when he decides he wants to come back, he can turn around and he can follow the breadcrumbs. Now, you can hear him walking in this piece as he goes along, but when he decides to come back, he turns around and there are no breadcrumbs left because the birds have eaten them all. Ravel's music sets the scene with the feeling of walking footsteps. Have a listen to the oboe and the cor anglais playing Tom Thumb's walking melody as he wanders quietly through the forest carefully dropping his crumbs of bread. Listen out for this music as the Halle performs the whole piece. Tom Thumb walking deeper and deeper into the forest. And if you listen carefully, you can hear the birds towards the end of the piece, played on the violin and the piccolo. What do you think happens at the end of the story?
Hello, I'm Jo, and like Amy, who you met earlier, I also play in the flute section. As well as playing the flute, I also play its baby brother, the piccolo. The piccolo is about half the length of the flute, and it plays an octave higher. Piccolo literally just means little in Italian. The piccolo has some very special qualities. In the low octave, it can sound spooky and ghostly. In the middle octave, it can sound quite sweet and innocent, as you might have noticed in the previous movement, Tom Thumb. But the thing the piccolo is most famous for is its brilliant top octave, where it soars above the sound of the whole orchestra, adding a real sparkle to the sound. My name's Dave, and I'm the principal percussionist of the Halley Orchestra. Percussion is basically anything that you can hit, scrape, bang, shake, or rattle many of which you can find in your percussion trolley at school. My favourite percussion instrument is the snare drum. It's great for playing really exciting marching rhythms. Another one of my favourites is the little triangle, which is lovely for playing beautiful little sweet notes. In the orchestra, I like to think of us as the icing on the cake. We give a bit more excitement to the sound of the orchestra. We're great at playing really loud and exciting notes, but also, as you'll hear in Mother Goose, we're great at playing very sweet and quiet, beautiful music too. The third movement, Empress of the Pagodas, comes from a very long and detailed fairy tale called The Green Serpent, which was written 300 years ago by a French lady. This particular section of the story is set in the Far East, and Ravel uses the exotic pentatonic scale to set the scene. The pentatonic scale is the one you get if you just play the black notes on a keyboard, and it sounds like this. On her adventures, the Empress gets shipwrecked on a magical faraway island. And as she bathes in the fabulous pool, tiny little porcelain puppets with wobbly heads, the pagodas of the title, come to life and serenade her with miniature instruments made out of nutshells. I think the piccolo's playing their tune. In this piece, the percussion section play many different sounds to create different colours to take you to this faraway magical land. The xylophone plays this tune and you can imagine the Empress being serenaded. Now, Imagine you've sailed away to that faraway magical island. As the Halley play the complete piece, listen out for the piccolo and the xylophone. You'll also hear an instrument a bit like a small piano called a celesta, and that makes a lovely magical sound. Imagine now the pagodas dancing and playing their instruments made out of almond and walnut shells.
Hi, my name is Sergio and I play clarinet in the Halle Orchestra and this is the clarinet. The clarinet um, is a member of the woodwind instrument family um, and uh, I'm going to tell you how it works. So we have this little piece of wood here which is called a reed and this is a single reed, it's a single piece of wood and then we put it in this piece at the top of the clarinet which is called the mouthpiece and then we hold it together with the ligature which is this round piece that holds everything together and then there's a small gap uh, in the reed so then when you blow the reed vibrates and that's what creates the sound Hi everybody my name's Simon and I play this rather unusual instrument in the Halle Orchestra this is a contrabassoon and it's quite rare the contrabassoon is also a member of the woodwind family, but because it's so much larger than, for example, Sergio's clarinet, it plays a lot lower. The contrabassoon plays so low that, unlike Sergio's clarinet that is just one long tube, the contrabassoon is actually one long tube that is doubled over on itself again and again and again. If I just explain to you here, um, we blow through the crook and the air goes down this side. It turns around at the bottom and comes all the way back up to here. The air goes all the way down again, right to the bottom of the instrument. It turns around again and through this top tube and out of here, which is called the bell. So if you can imagine, it's just a huge long tube that's been folded in half again and again and again. So in the next story, which is The Beauty and the Beast, uh, we first hear the beauty, which is portrayed by the clarinet. And this is how it sounds. In this story, the role of the beast is played by the contrabassoon. And in contrast to the clarinet tune, the contrabassoon is given a very angular and rather threatening melody, which goes like this. Mm. 
In this piece, the composer, Ravel, imagines a conversation between the beauty and the beast. Sometimes you can hear the beauty alone, sometimes the beast alone, and sometimes you can hear both of them combined together. So try to listen out and imagine what they might be saying to each other. And just at the end of the piece, you can watch the harp create this beautiful glissando magic moment where the ugly beast turns into a handsome prince. Hello, my name is Paulette and I play the violin in the Halle Orchestra. 
The violin is the smallest instrument in the string family, so it has the shortest strings. Its strings are also thinner, so vibrate quickly. The viola is a little bit larger than the violin, so plays lower notes. The cello is even larger than the viola, so plays even lower notes. And the double bass, you guessed it, is the largest instrument in the string family, so plays the lowest notes. There are two violin sections in an orchestra, the first violins and the second violins. The first violins often play a melody at a higher pitch than the rest of the string section. I play in the second violins. We play rhythmically and harmonically. We set the scene and character of the music. All string players make their sound by drawing their bow across the string. This creates a vibration. We can also make a vibration by plucking the string. This is called pizzicato. Tremolando is when I move my bow very fast on the string. I can make a really scary noise if I do tremolando and play close to the bridge of my instrument. In the final piece of Mother Goose, we return to the story of Sleeping Beauty. The music begins quietly and gently, a blanket of calm. We can imagine Sleeping Beauty lying peacefully in the enchanting garden before the prince wakes her. As she wakes, we hear a high-pitched violin solo. Listen out for this music as the Halle perform the Fairy Garden. As the music continues, it gets louder and louder. The piece ends in celebration of the prince and princess who live, as they always do in fairy tales, happily ever after. <laughs>